guys, welcome back to my channel. And we're here for another book haul. This seems to be a monthly event. And my book stack is quite high. So if you have been watching my vlogs or my Instagram stories and my Instagram stories, you will have seen all the books that are not in the book outlet boxes. So I have two book outlet boxes, one of which we've been waiting for for quite a while. And there are two more still floating around out there. One of them is full of cookbooks because I'm having fun doing the little cookbook thing I have with you guys. Um, which I'm going to do the next one soon. But the stack of books that I have next to me are pre-orders and because books, because I have problems. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, I'm just gonna start at the top and work my way down. They're in no particular order. The uh, pre-orders are mixed in with the normal stuff. And I'm sorry if you can hear my child, he's loud. He's at the, at the, on another floor at the bottom of the house and I can still hear him. Okay, so here we go. The first book I got was China Rich Girlfriend. I read, 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 read Crazy Rich Asians, Jay's, no. I read Crazy Rich Asians in October and I absolutely loved it. And I had book three, but I didn't have book two. So as soon as I'm done reading the um, Throne of Glass books and Muse of Nightmares, then I want to go back to either this series or this series. Um, oops, that's not the right book. That's the right book. So we have Legend, which I read in October, and really liked. I checked out Legend from the library, so I liked it so much I went and bought it myself. And now I have Prodigy and Champion as well. So I have the whole series. So I have all three of these and all three of these. The other book I grabbed without meaning to was um, Into the Day, the Into the Drowning Deep. It's supposed to be a dark mermaid story about the Marianas Trench. And I live next to the Marianas Trench. And I thought this would be kind of fun. It's written by Mira Grant, who's also Sean McGuire. And so it's supposed to be like super dark, super gruesome. And um, a couple of my friends have bought the book with me and we're all gonna do a buddy read soon. If you guys wanna join us, you're more than welcome to. I just don't know when it's gonna be yet. Now, um, one of my pre-orders, I have Music Nightmares. Yes, I have the UK covers behind me. This is the US covers. These are the ones that, this is the one I'm gonna be writing in. And that's gonna be like a traveling book. So I already finished writing in Strange the Dreamer and it's going to be sent out to my friend Chris soon. And she's going to write in it and then either send it back to me or send it on. We haven't decided what yet. I'm tempted because one of my friends wants to read it too. So I'm tempted to have her send it on and that will be three of us in one book and then they'll send it back to me when they're done. So that's what this one's for. That one's to stay pretty, this one's to write in. The next pre-order I got was Map of Days by Ransom Riggs. This is the exclusive Barnes & Noble edition. I don't know what it has. It's supposed to have like deleted scenes. Um, I finished the original trilogy earlier this year, like in January or something. It's been a while. And I'm really looking forward to getting back into that world. But you've seen my book collection, so you know that this is towards the top, but there's a couple of books ahead of it. And then um, a couple of the books I bought with the pre-orders and just because I wanted them. The first one is Shatter. This is the second book in the duology for Glitter. And I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this one and I realized it's already out and I still didn't buy it right away. And I read Glitter like a year ago. So I'm looking forward to reading this one now. Um, Glitter is about, it's, slightly in the future, but in the past as well. So um, it takes place just in the future. However, the characters are living in Versailles, like it is, you know, King Louis' time. And it's really weird. And this girl, this girl accidentally sees the prince accidentally kill a girl while they're having sex and she runs and tells her mom and her mom decides to blackmail the prince into marrying the daughter and the daughter doesn't want that. So this is like the rebellion story 
and the first one left off on a horrible cliffhanger and so I can't wait to get this one. Um, another book that I bought that I saw on um, Chelsea Palmer's uh, channel. She meant she went through and did like a upcoming October releases and when she mentioned this book I thought it sounded really interesting and then when she got it in one of her book boxes and talked about it some more I really wanted to read it and it's called Not Even Bones and it's about this lady who brings home magical dead people for her daughter to um, dismember and sell the body parts but what happens when she brings home someone that's not dead yet and the daughter won't kill the person, I guess is what it's supposed to be about. It says it takes a special type of monster to dissect dead people and sell them without guilt, is what it says on the back. So it sounds really good, I'm really intrigued. I kinda like the slightly gruesome, not too scary. Um, the next pre-order that I got is What If It's Us by Becky Allertelli and Adam Severa. I got the signed copy, which was pretty cool. And um, I love Becky Albertelli. I've read everything she's done. I've only read one of Adam Silvera's books, but his happened to be really heavy, really serious, kind of depressing. So I haven't read a lot of them. Um, and I am looking forward to reading this one. I hear it's more lighthearted like Becky and less gut-wrenching like Adam, but we'll see when I actually get to it. And then the next book that I got um, is another pre-order and it was because of my daughter. Um, I got The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy. It is the sequel slash companion novel to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which I still have not read, but it's one of Elisa's favorite books. So she's been gunning for this one. I told her that um, I have to read them first before I tell her if they're hers or if I buy her her own copy. So there we go because in this family, everyone wants their own copy of their favorite books. The next book that I got was The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. Um, I like Kristen Way, Kirsten Way a lot. I read her um, Vlad the Impaler books and thought that they were really interesting and was looking forward to reading more by her. And when this came out, I'm really interested in Frankenstein. I had planned to read it during Spooktober but I only got one chapter in and I got sidetracked with something else, which is also in this pile. <laughs> but I am looking forward to actually reading this. It's really short, so it'll be an easy one to get through when I get to it. The next book I got is The Savior's Champion and it is by a YouTuber. It's self-published, which is why it was so hard to get my hands on. It took forever to get here. I bought it a long time ago, but um, I bought it from Barnes & Noble, and Barnes & Noble had some problems getting it to me. Um, but it is a, I don't know, it's kind of giving me Throne of Glass vibes, or at least Sarah J Mass vibes, because it's about a champion. It says, respect the labyrinth, obey the labyrinth. On the side, on the, in the side it says, today you'll face an option, either be good and die, or dark and live. You're a good man, but you will choose the darkness. I know it's kind of sexy. It's got some romance vibes, lots of battling and gory, gross stuff. It is adult. I'm curious. I'll let you know. Okay. My baby took forever to get here. I pre-ordered this thing like a month and a half, two months ago. And what does it do? It waits until the day of release in the States for it to even ship. And that means it was two days late for here and then, or a day and a half late, because it waited until like, sometime at like, you know, working hours on the release date, which means it's like a day and a half late for us. And then it finally, finally comes a week late. I didn't get it until almost Halloween, which made me sad, but it's a huge chunker and I've been slowly waking my, making my way through um, Tower of Dawn waiting for this. Now that it's here, I only have 80 pages of Tarot Dom left, so guess what's gonna be coming next? And I'm so excited and I love it so much and they're my heart. If you need to know what this is about or what Throne of Glass is about, let me know in the comments and we'll talk about it because most of the people on here will know what it's about. Quick version, Assassin's Rule. So the last non-book outlet 
uh, book I have is the illustrated version of Tales of Beetle the Barb, which is what I put Elizabeth Frankenstein down for because look at it. It's so beautiful. And it is got lots of pictures. Me and Elise are reading it right now. I've already read the whole thing, but I'm going back through and rereading it with Elise because she gets in these moods where she can't sleep at night and she doesn't want to read to herself. So she's asked that I read to her and um, we started reading this book because it's got pictures in it, duh. But I love it, I cannot, uh, I love it, love it, love it. And this one I actually have read. Okay, scissors. Box number one. This one is the older box, not the newer box. The newer box just came in yesterday. I don't know what is in these boxes. I don't remember. Um, I've gotten to the point now where my book outlet orders, believe it or not, are slowing down. These are from August. And then I have one from October and one from September that are still in the mail. Um, the October one is cookbooks in Alice in Wonderland. And then I don't remember what the other one is. I don't even remember what this one is. I know one book in the bigger box because it was what we've been waiting for. Um, I bought my son's friend a book and it's in the box. This one, however, I don't remember. So, the obligatory paper. <laughs> All right, so if you don't know by my past uh, book hauls, I'm sorry if you can hear Caleb because he's yelling very loudly. Um, if you don't know from my past uh, book hauls, I get in these moods where I want nothing but fantasy. And then I get in these moods where all I want is like romance or teeny bop or middle grade or I just, I get in moods. My moods change frequently. Right now I have been in a romance mood forever and I am currently kind of in a fantasy mood because I am like deep in Sarah J Mass world and I'm loving every minute of it. So when I bought these, I was curious about the finishing series. So I have um, Etiquette and Espionage. I have the Custard Protocol Prudence. And so this is like the books one and or two of, oh look, there's a hardcover in here, whoops. I've got Courtesy and Conspiracies. I thought I bought paperbacks of all of them, but I guess I didn't. Um, is there any more in here? Yes, and there is Solace. So I bought, these are like, so we have book one, book one, book one, and book two. And I have a hardcover in here. Lovely. I did not mean for that to happen. But I don't know what they're about. I just know that they're well loved and I have to go figure out which one to read first. Hopefully I like the series, because if I don't, then yeah. All right, so I've also been curious about Brandon Sanderson. And when I saw they had a floppy paperback of one of his books on Book Outlet, I grabbed it. So from now on, my Book Outlet orders are probably gonna be things like this. Things are, they're, they're floppy editions of books that I wanna get that are too expensive for me just to go out right and buy. And hopefully more Brandon Sanderson books because I am very curious, but I wanna get the floppy ones and not the mass market paperback that my local bookstore has or that Barnes Noble has, or I also don't wanna pay like $40 for the jumbo sized hardcovers. I want these ones. So I don't know anything about this one exactly. I just know that he's like the king of fantasy and his books are supposed to be amazing. And I now have two of them. All right, next is The Bronze Key, which is the third, yes, the third book in the Magisterium series that Holly Black and uh, Cassandra Clare wrote together. I have book one and two. There's five total. I've been hearing mixed things about these. Um, the first ones are the Iron Trial and the Copper Gauntlet, and then you have the Bronze Key, and I don't remember what the next one is, but I have the first couple. So I am looking forward to being able to read these. They're super short, so they'll be great for like a burn through for like um, I reading, read a thought or something. The next book I bought was Night by, I think his name's Eli 
Weasel, Weisel. Um, we got to meet him a few years ago. Uh, we went to Washington DC and went to the um, uh, Holocaust Museum that he founded in DC. So it's right there with all the Smithsonian's. And we went in the, on Thanksgiving weekend in 2013. So we went five years ago. And um, there was this gentleman sitting at a table talking to people as they came through. And my son is obsessed with the Holocaust. I don't know what about it obsesses him, but he loves it. And so we um, spent like an hour sitting there talking to this guy. And uh, we were just fascinated by his story, by all the stuff that he was telling us. Little did we know, this is who we were talking to. Um, right before we left, he goes, if you want to know any more about me or you want to be able to get a hold of me to ask more questions, here's my information. This is my name and this is the book I wrote. And we're like, oh, that's really cool. I meant to buy it. So I went home, I looked it up on Amazon, I put it in my car and I left it there. And left it there and left it there and left it there. And basically would look at it every time I was in my car, it was like in the save for later section, but I haven't bought anything off of there forever because I don't buy from Amazon right now because Amazon takes too long to get here and they charge me shipping and they're kind of, I don't like them anymore. I think that I like Amazon again once we live stateside, but living on this stupid island, the island's not stupid, but Amazon's stupid how they behave with the island. So anyways, the point being that um, I saw it pop up on Book Outlet and I was like, I have Miss Born and there was like two copies left. I had this and there's one copy left and I was like, I brought my, my uh, cart up to $35 and I paid for it all because I really wanted to be able to get my hands on this book. Um, and the funny thing was, is the day I bought it, Caleb comes home from school with the book because he is doing, was doing it for school. And so he's already read it and returned it, but he loved it and wanted us to have a copy anyway. So I was like, guess what? Perfect, I just bought one. But yeah, he was amazing to talk to. He was amazing to um, be able to ask questions to, and he was just, he was a wonderful man. And I'm sad that he's dead, but I think it's great that we finally have his book. At least one of them, I think there's like three. I'm not sure. All right, and then the last two books in this box are Blood and Sand, which I saw on somebody's channel, but I can't remember whose, and it sounded really interesting. Um, the front says, forged in battle from the dust of the arena, a legend will rise. It's, um, oh, what if Sparty Kiss was a woman? That's why I bought it. Um, but I also heard rave reviews about it. Everyone who's read it says it's, says it's amazing. And so I'm really looking forward to this. And then the last one that I got was The Last Namsara, which I had intended on buying a long time ago. I missed it when it was, um, kind of, it came in a bunch of boxes and it was like a new release type. It was a, one of the bigger new releases, but I missed it when all that happened. And I just happened to be flipping through a uh, book outlet filling up my cart so I could buy the Brandon Sanderson and the night book. And I found this and I was like, perfect. Add that to the cart and off we went. But um, yeah, I liked it a lot. I, I, wanna, I want to read it a lot. I have not read this yet. I'm not sure why I think I liked it. I'm confusing my own self. Sorry. But yeah, I'm excited about this one and um, I'm glad I found it in a book outlet because then I can get it for cheaper. The pile's getting so big that all I have to do is lean over and drop books onto the pile now. And this is my new box. This one just came in yesterday. Um, I was thinking I probably was due for it soon because it's been like a month and a half. And I went and I looked and it was like, oh look, it's on its way. It'll be here today. So Tyler came home and he's like, oh, I must open it and take it to my friends. But I wanted to unbox it with you guys first. So I made him a promise that I would do it today so he could have the book and give it to his friends tomorrow. So he's got two friends at school that are big readers and um, I'm hoping they'll rub off on him because he wants to be a reader, but he doesn't like make the time for it. And so I bought them each a copy of a book and put it in this order. I don't, other than that, I don't know how to do 
So we have the paper. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, um, I bought, what is it called? Jacoby. Oh, God, a couple months ago, and I heard that it was a really great story, and I was excited to be able to read it, but I wanted the second and third book, too. Ah, there it is. So, the second book is Beastly Bones, and the third book is Ghostly Echoes. And then there is a fourth book, which is in my cart for Barnes & Nobles in the Save for Later section, but I am not buying it until I start reading these ones. And they did have the um, hardcover of the fourth book on Book Outlet, but I didn't want to have three paperbacks and one hardcover. I try my best to stick to either paperback or hardcover, not mix and match, but that doesn't always work. So the book that I bought for Taylor's friends was Scythe. So there's a copy for each of them. This one's a little more banged up and it came from Walmart. Um, but we got a paperback for each of them. They, he wanted to get them both Scythe and Thunderhead, but both the girls said just get Scythe. And if they wanted Thunderhead, they let me know later. So they asked for the paperbacks, so I got the paperbacks of both of them. Those go separate. All right, um, the next thing in here is A Quiet Kind of Thunder. I have heard amazing things about this. This is supposed to be one of those hard-hitting contemporaries. Um, this was originally published in the UK, and this is the US cover, which looks a lot different than the UK cover. The UK cover is like metallic and shiny and beautiful and gorgeous and all that kind of stuff. But um, I've heard it's really, really gut-wrenching, hard-hitting, you know, one of the ones that's gonna like destroy me. So I'm not ready for that at the moment, but I do go through little spurts where I want something that's gonna rip my heart out. And when I do, I'll have this. I also, at the time that I bought this, was going through a Romeo and Juliet phase where um, I wanted to watch Romeo and Juliet and I wanted to listen to the, to the soundtrack and I realized I've never read it. I have the whole opening spiel, the, I don't know what it's called. Whoa, there's a lot of extra stuff in here. I don't know what all this stuff in the beginning is. Um, at least wanted me to get the normal version, but I got this one because I thought it was nicer. So we have all the, okay, the, pro, the prologue part, the there's two households, both alike in dignity from Fair Veronia, where, I, where we lay our scene. That section, from ancient groves, brick to new mutiny. I have that whole thing memorized. Um, and that's just from watching the movies. So yeah, I thought it might be kind of nice to be able to have the whole play and just kind of read it because I've never done that before. And the beginning of this is Juliet's story, which I've never even heard of and did not know it was a thing. It says, Juliet's story, a retelling of William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet by Jacqueline Ritter. Written, I don't know, cool. And then I also got An Unkindness of Magicians, which I don't remember where I heard about this. I want to say it was like Murphy or something. It says she breathed in. Sydney was all at once an entire forest. She was roots and leaves, dirt and sky. Green and spring were blood. Her veins were blood in her veins, air in her lungs. She was between one heartbeat and the next, all of magic. And I don't remember what it's about but i remember hearing about it and wanting it and putting it in my cart which i do a lot i have a problem and i'm literally drowning in books that i want to read my husband is a very fast reader i am a very slow reader but i am a meticulous reader so between my audiobooks and my physical books i get through about eight books a month but it's because if i am doing something i don't listen to music i listen to books if I'm not doing anything, I don't watch TV. I read books. So I manage to get through like eight a month. My husband can read super fast, like twice my speed. If I could read as fast as that man, I would go through like 200 books a month and my TBR would be nothing in no time. But I don't, I can't. All right, so I also bought The Darkest Magic. I know this is one of the spinoffs to the Fallen Kingdom series. I think it's the second one. Again, it's one of those ones I have the entire column, the entire 
Fallen series in paperback. Saw this and thought, hey, look, it's in paperback. I'll add it to the collection. The next one I have is dirty. Sticker residue. It's called American Panda. And again, this is one of the ones that I saw ages ago. And it's just been kind of on my back burner and then it popped up and I remember going and I went, oh, I remember I wanted to get that. But I don't remember what it is or what it's about. All right, and then we're down to the last two books in this box. My cat is sitting in the other box. Maybe she should switch boxes. All right, so the first one I have is a Melissa De La Cruz book. I love her Witches of East End series. This is a teen spinoff of that series. I have the first one downstairs. This is the second one. I have not read the first one yet, and I actually forgot I owned it. It's one of those books that I've had probably since it came out. It's had, had it for so long that unless you guys watched my um, bookshelf tour, you probably didn't know I had it because I couldn't remember. But I found it downstairs and I loved The Witches of East End. So my plan is to reread The Witches of East End and then move directly into these because I love this series. Her writing for me is really, really hit and miss. Um, this series I loved. The Disney one that she did was just too for me. If my, my daughter likes it, great. I definitely don't normally have the problem of a series being too juvenile for me to read. Normally I will read anything. But that series was just too, it's too dull for me. So um, yeah, this one, I really, I really like the adult version, so I'm hoping I like the teen version too. And then the last one I got is called Witches in New York, and I can't remember what it's about, but I remember thinking, that sounds amazing. It takes place in the year 1880, and it takes place in New York, and I thought that sounded really cool. I like the kind of historical fiction ones, like I really want to read Le Bray's, um The Diviners, but I don't want to read it until I know there's going to be a fourth book. But because she's been so slow at writing them, I have not read them yet on purpose because as soon as the, the series is complete, I'm going to read all of them. But I hate the fact that the fourth one has been in limbo for too long and I don't trust it. And the same with the Name of the Wind by Patrick, Patrick Rothfuss. I'm also not starting that one yet for the same reason. I don't want it to be stuck with a, with a series that I really, really love and have no idea when the last book is coming out. So this is my haul. I hope you enjoyed it. My camera has shut off on me twice, which is telling me this is gonna be a long one. And if you guys made it to the end, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, if there's anything in this huge stack or in any of the other hauls that you've seen from me that you guys want to buddy read, please let me know because that makes my reading more fun. Um, but in the meantime, I will talk to you guys later. Bye.